I am not the only one that is frustrated by that. Senator Bernie Sanders is also very frustrated by that. Let's put this up on the screen. He's decided to uh, jump in and do a, a couple weekends of barnstorming here across the country. This is from the New York Times. Their headline is Bernie Sanders fearing weak Democratic turnout plans midterms blitz. Mr. Sanders said he thought the Democratic Party was, quote, doing rather poorly at selling itself to working class voters. Uh, you are not wrong, sir. He's planning an eight state blitz with at least 19 events over the final two weekends before the midterm elections, looking to rally young voters and progressives as Democrats confront daunting national headwinds. Um, he's going to Oregon, California, Nevada, Texas, Florida, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. Um, and he also has been out, you know, speaking out. And we covered before he had written an op-ed basically making the point of, you guys have to have something to say about the economy since it's the number one issue. Let's take a listen to what he said to Jake Tapper. Well, Jake, first of all, I happen to believe that the Supreme Court decision overturning Roe versus Wade is an absolute outrage. I think Democrats have got to fight to make sure that it is women who control their own bodies, not the government. So I think this is a very important issue, but I don't believe it can be the only issue. Uh, at a time when we have an economy in which the wealthiest people, the billionaire class, are getting much, much richer while working people are struggling to put food on the table, it goes without saying that we have got to focus on the economy and demand that we have a government that works for all of us and not just wealthy campaign contributors. And the irony here is Republicans say, you know, they talk about the economy. Really, not one of them is going to vote to raise the minimum wage to a living wage. Not one of them is going to vote for legislation that makes it easier for workers to join unions. Mm -hmm. Not one of them is going to vote to do what every other major country on earth does and guarantee health care for all people, nor will they vote to raise taxes on billionaires at a time when the richest people in this country, in some cases, pay nothing in federal income tax. So, so I happen to think the Republican line is phony and Democrats have got to respond. There is a reason why Bernie Sanders continues to be the most popular prominent Democrat. And there were just new approval ratings that came out that proved that. And it's because he's like literally the only one saying anything about, you know, the issue that people care about the most. I'm covering my monologue today. 50 percent of inflation during the pandemic was because of corporate profiteering. Mm. Like, where are Democrats on that issue? There was Stan Greenberg, who's like sort of storied working class pollster on the Democratic side, tested a bunch of messages. His number one message that moved the most voters was, we're going to have the child tax credit, hardworking families are going to get $600 a month into their bank accounts, and we're going to pay for it by taxing the rich. How hard is that? Where is that messaging? Where is at least, they won in Georgia by saying really clearly, you're going to get checks. You're going to get checks. You're going to get checks. Remember Warnock? Yeah, I remember. All that stuff. That worked, and they just completely memory hold it because they're incompetent, incompetent, because they're ideologically stupid, and because they also don't want to make promises that they ultimately don't really want to follow through well, on. Well, they're not going to do it. I think that's really what comes through to me. I'm like, at the end of the day, we've seen the whole mansion cinema game enough times that people just don't believe it. And maybe they shouldn't. I mean, why would you? Like, do you really have confidence if you have 51 votes that some sort of new reconciliation bill is going to come through? Like, Well, what they're saying really is if they so. have two more senators, right. they can get rid of the filibuster, at least for Roe versus Wade. And again, are they going to actually do that or is some new you know, the rotating right. villain theory, whatever, someone new going to pop up and say, actually, I decided I love the filibuster too. Very, very possible. But they're literally, I mean, even, okay, even if you just wanted to lean into abortion, they're not even doing that well. Like, they never put these Republicans on the right, pressured them, made it difficult for them, made them take hard votes. True. Nancy Pelosi was pressed by Andrea Mitchell of like, well, what's going to be different when you have 52 senators versus you already have power? Why not try to codify it now? Just nothing but excuse making. So even on the issue that they've decided to be all in on, even on that, they're not fighting. Yeah. So what makes anyone think they're going to fight if they retain power? Yeah, I mean, I remember we said this here. We're like, hey, look, you know, Republicans all say that they support a 15-week ban. Republicans, I believe, have all voted. Most of the people in the chamber have voted for a 22-week. So I'm like, all right, put it on the floor then. Put it. Do it. Say if you actually believe this, like, fine. But they won't even do that. And right. I think that is, you know, that that's a whole other conversation about the abortion groups and all these other people. But they have really squandered uh, what could have been been a good moment for them. And you're, I think you're right, which is you can't let them off the hook right. whatsoever. So look, I mean, you have fundamentals plus bad politics. Doesn't take a genius. Let me let me say one more thing, because yeah. I really am on a tear with it. I cannot. Yeah. Republicans have said they want to cut Social Security and Medicare. 
How does not every American in the country know that fact? And want to put the debt ceiling in, on the table to do they so. Want, they are out saying they want to trigger a government crisis when they come into office. That is their own stated plan. Why does everyone not know that? It is complete political malpractice. And you know what? Yes, the landscape is still difficult, party in power, all these things. But you're not even trying. You're not even trying. And so, yeah, now, next piece, predictably, instead of actually trying to win, instead they're just trying to figure out who to throw under the bus. Um, and I can tell you who will get thrown under the bus. It's the left, even though Bernie Sanders is the only one who's saying anything that makes any damn sense politically or otherwise. Let's go ahead and put this up on the screen from our old friends at the yeah. Hill. Democrats ready for midterm blame game. Uh, Alexander Bolton, three weeks out, beginning to look more and more like a victory for Republicans. Democrats are playing the blame game. You had Obama preemptively come out. You know, I actually thought some of his comments, I didn't listen to the whole thing, but he talked about, you know, sort of the like, over woke language. She said Democrats and progressives can be a buzzkill by constantly scolding people for being politically incorrect. You've got uh, Alyssa Slotkin and some other uh, younger House Democrats who are in tough, uh, in tough spots are arguing the party leadership has fallen out of touch and have called for a, quote, new generation and new blood in charge of the party. Now, these are the people who are like, you know, they make like the Pete Buttigieg argument of generational change where it's like, let's keep the same terrible politics, but let's just stick some new people in charge ultimately. Mm -hmm. But just think it's very telling that already you have people trying to angle to be able to shape the narrative of exactly why they lost. Well, I, I actually am not sure that the left will get the blame. I mean, I think the woke stuff is, I mean, look, it's not like the center leftists aren't all woke on their own. They're, so, they're worse because they're no, only I mean. woke exactly. and then they don't even do anything that's for anyone. That's my point. So yeah. I'm like, I actually think Biden is going to get a ton of the heat. I I think he deserves it. Like, yeah, he's the leader he of the party. He's the person who squandered this moment. Yes. He's the person who's going to preside over a loss of some sort and who majority of his people. So- I don't think old Biden can wriggle his way out of this one. I, I mean, there's just no way. Like, if you lose an election, it's just, it's on you. Obama suffered this in 2010, Bush in 2006, like, every uh, Clinton in 94, every single one of them effectively had to make a, a, a statement where they're like, I take responsibility, yeah. and I'm either going to adjust course and try and win my reelection, or, like, this is on me. Ultimately, everyone you just named did win their reelection. Yeah, I know. But- they had higher approval ratings than Biden does. And Biden, as we've been covering, consistently a majority of the Democratic Party says, we want someone else. Now, that's before suffering what could potentially be a significant midterm defeat. And the whole reason this guy is here is because he's supposedly a winner. You know, I mean, we talk about that with Trump, like his whole, like, we're going to get tired of winning, whatever. The only reason... Democrats back this guy when they preferred other policies, especially on economics, than what Biden was offering was because they thought he was the guy who could win. He was the guy that could take out Trump. And they're going to be very concerned about that again, because obviously Trump is waiting in the wings um, to make his comeback. So what is it going to look like for Democratic voters if now not only do you not really like what he has to offer in terms of economics, but you also don't really think that this is the guy who's up to the task of beating Trump. And yeah, his age and his, you know, inability to like really coherently speak and his brain meltdowns and all those things, like that plays a very significant role into uh, that calculation as well. So I do think you're right. I think if Democrats suffer, a, you know, real significant defeat, in the midterms, if Republicans take the House and they take the Senate, I do think Biden is going to be in a very vulnerable position to a potential interprimary um, or, you know, party primary challenge that could very much take him out. Because what is the rationale for keeping him if you're not doing a good job and we don't believe you can win? Yeah, no, look, I think you're right. Also, not for nothing, his 80th birthday is a month away. So just so everybody knows that. That'll be it. Actually, I'm going to be curious if they even acknowledge that he turns 80 years old, like his own They've been birthday. trying to downplay it for sure. Yeah, they're sure. not doing the big Obama great birthday number. bash for sure. Yeah. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. 
That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.